Namaste and welcome to the Bharat Vartha podcast. We often hear of the demographic dividend uh, that we have 800 million people or so under the age of 35 years and how this could be a huge boon for India. But it also poses a huge challenge in terms of skilling, development, education and employment. The nature of work and employment itself has changed, especially post-COVID. So how can we think about jobs and more generally creating work opportunities for Bharat? That is the topic of our discussion today. Uh, to discuss this, uh, we have Mr. Ramesh Kailasam, who is the president and CEO of IndiaTech.org, a think tank and industry group. You've heard him speak on a couple of uh, Bharat Vartha podcasts earlier, speaking on uh, e-commerce and crypto policy. Uh, welcome, Ramesh. Uh, great to have you here. Thank you, Roshan, for having me today. Uh, and joining him in conversation is uh, Mr. Munish Chavla, who is the co-founder of Jeevitam, a platform that is redefining the way people seek work, find work and get hired. Munish is also an industry veteran with three decades of work at various corporate organizations. Uh, welcome, Munish. Thank you very much. Huh? It's my pleasure and honor to be on this interesting talk. Thank you very much, Rohit. Uh, really looking forward to, uh, you know, many different facets that uh, we will discuss today. Ramesh, let me start with you. You know, we often talk about employment data being inaccurate or opaque or unavailable, right? Uh, because also we have a very significant informal economy. What do the numbers look like in terms of employment in India? Uh, and if you could also give us a sense of, you know, what kind of occupations, jobs, uh, you know, that people are engaged in? Well, thanks, Roshan. I think uh, it's an important question and numbers do matter in this whole discussion. Primarily because we as, as a society and as a government and as, as people looking at the employment market, we often tend to look at work and jobs from a different perspective. I mean, largely, if you see the common living room talk amongst most of the middle class houses would be, oh, did you get, manage to get a job in in a TCS, Wipro, Infosys or likes and, and, and the life ends there. Or did you manage to get some work in some factory or something like that? People do not realize the scale of the problem. People do not realize the phenomenal effect that the population has versus the jobs that get created and, and which is that segment looking at jobs. So if we took look at a global number and, and, and I think the focus has partially increased more. I'm seeing that post the pandemic because a lot of people did lose jobs. A lot of people had their jobs getting redefined. A lot of traditional walls got broken when people came to realize that you don't need to come to an office to work. You can operate from anywhere. So uh, if you look at the work numbers and, and job numbers, if we look at it, I mean, interestingly, globally, I mean, you have something like 333 crore people working. I mean, this is the global employment number. 333 crore people working globally, of which 200 crore people actually operate in the informal employment. So, which means that globally, if I have the whole world together, the total number of firm jobs is equivalent to the population of India. If I minus 333 crores with 200 crores of working. So, which means it is impossible for one country to produce 120 crore or 130 crore jobs. And jobs, according to me, is 9 to 5 or whatever shifts you may want to add to it. Now, if you look at added to this, you have a new phenomena which is the gig economy, which is fast catching. Uh, 20 crore people globally into the gig economy coming over and it's fast growing. I mean, the beauty of it is it is covering blue collar and white collar. Frankly, if you ask me, I mean, this is something I, I did write recently about but I mean, even Manrega is a form of a gig that is keeping work, giving work to people. The other interesting part which we as India need to know and, and, and I'm coming to India now, is that that our population on an average growth every year comes to roughly 2 crores a year. If we take out the infant mortality and uh, unfortunate deaths at various levels, that has fairly fallen down to 700,000 to 800,000 per year, which means that you have a 1.9 crore population every year getting added, which when it reaches the age of 18 will be looking for work or job. How many jobs are we creating per year? Are we creating 2 crore jobs per year? The answer is no. It was always like this since a fairly long period of time. It is just that a lot of people chose entrepreneurship. And entrepreneurship, again, I would like to clarify here, is that in the 60s, 70s and 80s, if you did not get a job, you will open a shop. And that's an honorable thing to do because at least you are not picking up a gun. And, and it also means that that is what kept our society civil. That is what kept respectability in our society to say, hey, uh, you need to have keep yourself engaged. And, and the respect was that izjat ki roti, as they say, which is like I earned my bread with respect. It was a fundamental slogan and driver which kept people. So if it is the 
person who opens a shop or a person who works on errands or a person who spreads the towel and sells things on the road, they're all earning honorably. And that is what differentiates our civilization from a lot of other civilizations, which may have picked up and there may be, and, and the reason why we don't have civil unrest in the country. Now, having said that, uh, there is a transition happening because the new generation of people who are coming in may or may not want to tow what their previous generations in the 60s, 70s, 80s and 90s may have practiced and may want to dabble in something on their own. So, if you look at the Prime Minister's drive of creating job seekers, I think that's a that's a thought process fundamental change that is being ushered in. Job seekers becoming job creators. I think that is a slogan which is having its effect. A lot of people are trying to become job creators. Many may or may not succeed, but then that is a driver which can actually absorb a large chunk of the population which actually needs to look for work and be gainfully engaged. Employed would be still a word of employment. Now, the other important thing, and, and Munish has been, we have been having discussions on this regard, is that the Prime Minister mentioned that 80 crore people were given food grade. What does that also indicate is 80 crore people are in the vulnerable segment of this. And therefore, it is important that efforts are taken to put that extra money that goes into their pocket to have an earn a livelihood, have potential for more work, and they are able to honorably, honorably live and run their families and so on. So, which means Means that there is a greater importance that often the the living room conversations in most places is okay did you get into an any of these big four or five companies and so on on the tech front and so on we need to change that narrative to say are we creating enough work opportunities for our population and i think i will stop here to lay the ground for the discussion because i think this is the problem statement that we as a country need to address saying are we creating enough work op opportunities for the population that is there or the population that is ga getting added every year and we need to continue to add them because that's what will take you towards a 5 trillion or a 10 trillion dollar economy the amount of work opportunities that india creates because the more and more tech companies you bring in the more and more manufacturing you get in you are strategically meeting your requirements as a country because you are reducing your dependency on imports and probably things that you require but these are not labor intensive anymore as more and more things are getting produced you have 75 people working in the size of a football field factory, three shifts, 75 people. You're not going to see scale of employment. You're going to see probably strategic needs being met through such manufacturing. We still need to create work opportunities for the rest of the population. So I'll stop here and, and, and we'll take it forward. Right. Yeah, you bring up uh, multiple points, uh, Ramesh. I think one of that is that, you know, conventional ways of looking at work or employment has to change, right? Because A, mathematically, it cannot support the needs of the country, uh, right? And B, I think aspirations itself ha are have are very different, right? Today, I mean, when we look at a 25, 30-year-old person, uh, their aspirations are not, uh, you know, how it was, uh, you know, maybe 20 years back, right? Munish, I mentioned uh, in the introduction that, we, you know, we have about 800 million people under 35 years. And when we look at these folks, right, how should we design employment or work opportunities for them? If you look at, you know, avenues like banking, PSU jobs or you know government jobs and so on uh, all of them still have very stiff competition right and the numbers don't the ratios don't make sense so what is this fundamental rethink that is required Thank you very much, Roshan. And uh, Ramesh has really set the ground. Uh, see, it's interesting. Till now, we have only looked at the work provider perspective, right? Because in a platform, there are always, in a in a real world, there are always work providers and work seekers, right? I talk about job seekers, work seekers in the same side. So essentially, there are providers and there are seekers. What has always, you know, taken shape is what is the work provider looking at? You know, he's an industrialist. What sort of a people he requires? Where the government is there? what sort of people they require that has been always a look at the work seeker perspective never came in and what the change which is happening is now is there is a work seeker perspective coming in and a choice being given to the work seeker what does he wants and what are his requirements and they keep changing earlier in the old time you know you were either a engineer or a doctor or a scientist and then that's it then you are having a shock or you go to army that's the way which is there but now the choice and the range has increased the world has changed this crisis ongoing crisis i'll still say it's an ongoing crisis because still there is no end you know we, we are always seeing that this crisis basically changed everything today you have if i'm i'm looking for work i'm in a small town i have i know in a, that small town there are not enough work opportunities i'll migrate to bigger cities migration there has been a good migration there has been a forced migration so i used to migrate to those things so that's how you know i belong i have i've come from agra and now i'm working i, I started my career in bombay because there were not enough 
of work opportunities in Agra. So if you have need of work opportunities, you have to migrate. There was no choice for you. World now is changing with this crisis, ongoing crisis. The work seeker is now getting options, more choice now, right? That's a change which is happening. Work from home. You know, the biggest innovation which happened in this uh, crisis was work from home. Till two years back, I was a banker, right? If someone tells me in a bank, can you work from home? You should have said, are you crazy? Two years back. Now it is an acceptable work option. And what is this doing? Work from home is where, you know, you are in a, if you are, you're working from Calcutta or you are working from Bombay or you're working from Bay Area, how does it matter? And this is a biggest innovation which has happened. What Ramesh was also saying, prior to this crisis, you know, you had to come to office. There was no option. But now work from home, work from anywhere is an option which is coming. So if I, I, I was in, I'm in Agra and I need a work opportunity. I need not migrate to Bombay to find a work opportunity. In Agra, I can work for a BFSA or NBFC sitting from my home. That is there. So what is changing and what was earlier and which is the problem right now is, yes, it is a time which is coming out that the work seeker, right, is also getting an option to work wherever he wants to and whatever it has to. Unfortunately, in India, you know, when it, we look about jobs, we are only looking at government jobs, which there is a safety. I was sitting with someone yesterday around 6 lakh people appear and 600 people get selected in the IS exams. So 6 lakh versus 600. There is no relation. And why you are looking at, Arre, ek bar main IS officer ban gaya, my life set over. Then I don't have to. Today everyone is looking for that. Second thing, you know, so this whole job thing is very, very, either it's a government jobs or you are going to IMs, right? And you get a 40 lakh, 50 lakh, 1 crore package and that is how a job is looked at. I think that is flawed. Everyone has to look at work opportunity, right? Hamare yahan pe, na to kaam ki kami hai, na kaam karne walo ki kami hai. That's the thing is too, how do you match those people? In our country, everyone is working. This is not someone, you know, he may be opening a shop which is there. He may be having a, his own cart or he may be having, you know, working on his own. The change which is happening now, courtesy this crisis is and the emergence of platforms. Before Uber coming in, there was always a taxi. What Uber did was Uber formalized it. So now there are drivers because taxi ke liye taxi station pe rehta tha. Aapko taxi ka ek station hota tha, maha jate the aap, aur taxi aapko milti thi, aap sadak pe khado jaye, aapko taxi aayegi. That was a problem they sell and they formalized and Uber came in. Delivery food ki pehle bhi hoti thi, but usme aapko yehi nahi pata hota tha ki wo driver, rider hai ka. Now with Zomato and Swiggy coming in, it has been formalized. So emergence of platforms has also made lot of things and formalized this sector. So yes, there are enough work opportunities available. There are, there is a change which is happening and we have to be ready for this change and work opportunities to be given to everyone. Roshan. Right, right. Yeah, I think, uh, you know, the, the COVID has uh, been like a second flattening of the world, right? I mean, uh, you know, as you mentioned, Munish, I mean, you can be literally anywhere. Ramesh, gig economy is one of those new ways of work and life that, uh, you know, has emerged over the last five, 10 years. But there are also drawbacks to this, right? I mean, workers being treated as partners and in terms of, you know, values and benefits and so on, right? What is the right policy response to this? You know, we've heard of concerns on safety, job security and stuff. Um, should the government step in? And if so, you know, what are some of the policy measures uh, that the government has, uh, uh, you know, done to uh, ensure, you know, that these folks are taken care of? So, interestingly, uh, one of the things that has happened is the government has looked into this. In fact, there was a discussion that happened a couple of years back. And going back to certain examples that Manish did mention, uh, there was a debate around the fact that, okay, so do we, like Western countries, where the number is lesser, formalize these into employment? And if we were to look at that numbers, my response to that was very simple. That if you were to formalize every platform, every aggregator, I mean, the beauty of these models and the economic models is it is working well because you earn per what you do deliver, yeah. right? If there is no delivery, you don't earn, but neither does the platform earn, right? So it is a sharing model where everybody gets to earn on a transaction and you get to earn well, depending on how of the demand supply gap. But if we were to formalize this into an employment form, uh, while in Western democracies and Western economies, this has been something which has been pushed by unions, the numbers are not to the level what India grows up. Like, I mean, you look at the number of cab drivers in the, you look at the number of riders who are delivering. I mean, we are already talking something like 50 lakh plus. Look at what the biggest employer of the country is like. I mean, you look at the Indian army, the paramilitary forces and everything put together, you might reach to some 14 lakhs or 15 lakhs, something of that. You 
you look at the Indian railways, that's another uh, couple of millions. So these numbers of the gig that we are talking about far outshoots the largest employers, top two employers of the government for whom you have a national budget outlay. So if we were to go into that employment route, we might require a budgetary support, whether you will see next year that, okay, the budget for Ola or Uber or Swiggy or Zomato is so much. I mean, that's how the scale of the problem is. So I'm not saying that the gig economy workers should not receive protection, should not be, I mean, earning and they should have their safety stuff denied. They should be allowed. But at the same time, the economics of the model do not look at employment. The other thing is the pride. And here is where the difference comes in. I was speaking to carpenters, I was speaking to plumbers, electricians, all of whom are also part of this economy. It's not, I mean, unfortunately, we tend to begin that, okay, a rider is a gig guy. There's life beyond riders. You have beauty salons, you have uh, electricians, you have AC air conditioner repair guys too. Even you have software coders as well. I mean, it goes, as I said, the beauty of this model is it cuts across all levels. You have home tutors, you have people uh, who are travel agents and all of that operating in the gig world. If I were to ask, uh, I mean, I did ask this question to plumbers, electricians, drivers saying, okay, are you willing to work under any of these brands that operate today in a nine to five job? And the answer was a loud no, primarily because people are looking at flexibility. People are looking at ability to switch platforms. People are able today, if you look at the gig economy operators, they are on multiple platforms. They sometimes choose saying, okay, next three days, I'm not going to work because I slogged in last week. It's their choice. You have that choice facility available. So the pride also gets hurt saying, I mean, you did mentioned you've been traveling with various cab operators uh, and you've been talking to them. I mean, I was talking to a few of them and they would say, look, I'm not employed under those guys. I am self-employed. There's pride in that. And coincidentally, I attach on these platforms to get some extra work. So therefore, one is that constituent, that large constituent is not ready to do a job because of the flexibility. And plus, there is also a self-respect and pride involved because they are self-driven entrepreneurs. The second part is also that the scale. Again, we as a country have to look at scale. We can't be saying, okay, after the next few years, two crore people are employed by this sector and therefore all of them on salary. Just imagine, I mean, these models won't work. I mean, you need to get the entire probably funding from all VCs for the next five years and put them to take care of one year salary maybe. So you will you'd have all those kind of problems. So what is the government looking at? Government did recognize these aspects. There was a lot of brainstorming and finally the Ministry of Labor came up with those labor laws and regulations in which there was one section called the Code on Social Security. Uh, what does the Code on Social Security do amongst various things is to say that, so just like you have, and by the way, it is not just gig, it also takes care of unorganized sector and so on. So for, for the employment, blue collared and others, you have the PF and other social security benefits, medical insurance and so on. For the factory level workers, you have the ESI benefits and so on with access to employee state insurance and its benefit and hospitalization and so on. For the unorganized sector and the gig sector, there was no social security code available or social security available, although aggregators were putting forth their points of view that, look, we cover our folks for health insurance, for in, uh, what you call uh, accident insurance and accident cover and so on. Plus, we also take care of some of the family members in the insurance cover. However, the government was of the opinion that maybe we need to have a third tier to take care of the unorganized sector and the gig worker. So they came up with a code on social security, which actually now says that 1% of your turnover has to be contributed to a fund and the gig workers have to be registered with the government in a platform that the government will release. After having registered with that, in, now now the question came in saying, okay, how many gig workers do you have? How much do you have? Instead of that, they said, you contribute 1% of your respective turnovers. This will go into the pool. The center will contribute. The states, depending on the pro rata, how many workers are there from their respective states will contribute to the pool. And this will be evolved to create a program for healthcare benefits, hospitalization, maternity, paternity, whatever is required could be looked at. And that was the beautiful model that the center came out with. Although I think the challenge that came is it did not define 1% of which turnover because many of these businesses have four or five lines of businesses and therefore companies were of the opinion saying okay I do gig I also do lending I also do NBFC I also have advertising platforms so my turnover is actually gross of all this so I can't be contributing 1% of the turnover of what is not related to gig so one of the clarifications which is pending from the government side to the industry and we have also been representing is to clarify this important aspect out 
to say that 1% of your contribution shall be from the turnover that you directly kind of get by delivery through gig workers and gig services. And therefore, it's important that companies now manage segmental reporting and accounting to separate these revenues out so that people are aware and clear. Otherwise, if you were mixing your turnover and making gross revenue out of it, the government will naturally apply it on the gross revenue. So that is one thing I think which is pending clarification, which we are hoping that the government will clear soon. But once that comes in, then obviously there are some small other issues on how does the gig worker get registered? What if there is duplication? Uh, what if the person is there on multiple platforms and all that which are being ironed out? I mean, those are minor things. But I think the great initiative from Ministry of Labor is to come out with this. Important thing is to get these things out so that gig workers can get access to social security and they can get access to these benefits like any other section of the society gets from various government schemes. Right. And I think I would also say the platforms and companies have also kind of corrected, right? I mean, if you look at it recently, whether it's Swiggy, Zomato, Urban Clap, whoever, uh, they've gone beyond offering financial services and insurance and stuff. I mean, Zomato has set up a, a fund for education uh, of uh, all of the gig workers, gig kids and, and so on, right? And uh, Swiggy had an upskilling program as well. So Munish, uh, your organization, Jeevitam, is actively involved in uh, helping these folks, uh, you know, get what we call gig jobs. Uh, what is your experience been like you know when you talk to one or two of these people um you know could, could you give us a bit of uh, you know a flavor of you know what the examples have been like yeah thank you i'll just give you a, you know jivitam right how what is uh, jivitam is a sanskrit name for livelihood that is the startup uh, i am the co-founder and chief happiness officer when we enter into it the vulnerable segment space we call it blue collar you know we call them migrant workers we call them gig economy work we call them uh, construction workers there are different names we have given to the vulnerable segment but essentially we said these are the bottom of the period people and they are vulnerable that is there so we looked into when we came into we, we did not find a platform which was serving this segment they were knockeries of the world and they were monster of the world and everyone was there. But there were no platform essentially for this segment, the vulnerable segment, which we are saying. Why I'm saying this is we saw this vulnerable segment have three essential attributes. They are not so educated. So a college student coming from tier two, tier three city, tier two, tier three town is as good as not educated. You can't, he can't even make a, his own bio Then they are eighth pass or uneducated or 10th pass students and all those things. So that is one, one uh, characteristics or attribute. Second characteristics, they all do not have have access to internet smartphone or they do not know how to operate it. WhatsApp kar denge, YouTube dekh lenge, iske aage nahi, not beyond that. What is there? That is number two. And number three, India is a country of languages. If you go into the interiors of Tamil Nadu, you have to speak in Tamil. If you go to interiors of Gujarat, you have to speak in Gujarati. Interiors of West Bengal, you have to speak in Bengali. So, wherever you are going, language is a big important thing. So, what has, what is a solution for them has been there is that you go to a website, Nokri website or a Monster website or a Shine website and you can apply that standard thing for a white collar worker but for this vulnerable segment they are not educated how will they go and uh, access a, a website or app they do not uh, they are not having access to internet smartphone how will they go to website or app and they want to be spoken in their regional languages so they are not very many multilingual websites and apps so what was the solution voice we saw as a solution where he said padna likhna nahi aata bolna aata hai internet smartphone nahi hai aapke paas analog phone hai and you know we started with our platform which works in 21 indian languages so simply Simplicity is the key. You have to be simple when you're looking at masses. You have to be simple and stupid to that extent that if I need work, right, what has been the traditional ways? Oh, yeah, I will get into a bus or a train and go to a metro city. I will go to my, my village guy or my relation or on things and say, Mujhe kaam dilwa do. right? He's not saying job. He's saying, Mujhe kaam chahiye, right? And then he will take him to his place where he's working. Sir, isko ye mere se hai, ye mera bhai hai, ye mera dost hai. Isko kaam dilwa dijiye. So that was the traditional way of for this segment to work or contractors will go to a village and bring everyone in uh, hordes and sabko wo kaam dilwa denge. So they, this guy had never had a choice. I said, today if you are looking for work, you don't have to go anywhere. Just call and register. That is one which we that's a, uh, you know, the innovation we brought into this particular whole thing where, it, where simple application process. I need work. There has to be a good call to action. So that is what we did and in two years, we, we created a platform with 1.6 crore people on our platform. That is the numbers we could bring in right because once they start getting work they are all communities and they are very closely knit communities if we are a white collar worker if i get a job i will not tell anyone but these guys will go and say call number and register and when they started registering you know they got they started getting automated calls from our side ki ye opportunity aapke liye available hai reliance jio mart ke sath aapko kaam karna hai aapko kitni tankha milegi aapko shift mein kaam karna padega aapko uniform pehnni padegi and you are done so this voice match 
making voice based matchmaking and voice based registration played a big role and i believe that is what is you know required for this segment right which is vulnerable so that is one big innovation which we did second was i have a choice i want to do a job 9 to 5 job i should be given options but i don't want to go and do a 9 to 5 job like ramesh was saying i want to be on my own i want to be an entrepreneur i want to have a flexibility i want to have a flexibility to work where i am so what i do pehle bhi wo karta tha right agar wo ek street food vendor ban jata tha ya wo driver ban jata tha ya fir wo tech freelancer ho jata tha ye already he was doing this it was not that he was not doing but there were no formal platforms for him which could help him do and earn more what is urban clap doing if you look into urban clap model right what is the urban model ek plumber pehle bhi tha air, air condition repair wala pehle bhi tha pehle wo shop pe leke wo kahin pe likh deta tha apna number aur aap jaake usko contact karte the now urban clap is bringing business to him he is training them they are bringing business to him they say you are good in ac make repairing mechanic you do just that good job business ki zimmedari hamari so he is now focusing only on delivery of the job right he is not focusing on sourcing that so formal platforms have come in so gig what we call or informal uh, entrepreneurial network is the biggest thing the you know this gig have they are uh, place agnostic you can work from anywhere they are time agnostic you want to have two days leave you can do that they are gender agnostic you know you are a you, you are a man or a woman they don't care or anything these are place agnostic so education qualification if you are a eight pass you can become a driver or a rider or a repair person and if you are a mtech or a btech you can become a tech freelancer or you have done a bed or med you can become a a tutor with byju's or anyone right so this whole freelancing framework has right brought in everything today there are aspirational districts how do i go and get someone work opportunity in a aspirational district gig is the answer right gig is the answer because today whatever qualification whatever status he has i have some work opportunity for him and these are all formal opportunities which are helping him do the jobs so that is the big picture which is emerging and that is a big opportunity which is there which jeevitam is focusing on right uh Ramesh, uh, you know, Munish mentioned gender agnostic, and with that, you know, we come to a very important point. Uh, you wrote this in your article as well, right? How women can be a catalyst for economic growth. You know, labor participation among women uh, in India, especially, is pretty low, right? Uh, what are some of the reasons, and you know, how can we kind of increase this as well? Well, that's an interesting question. I mean, if you look at a country which is aspiring to become a five trillion dollar economy, wanting to become a ten trillion dollar economy in so many years of time, uh, we have to all. contribute as a population in that process so on one side you have the industry which is trying to create grow uh, produce uh, give services and so on but on the other side you also need the population to lift the weight up and which means that there has to be opportunities for the population that's how the gdp grows that's how the economy grows and in that segment if you look at it you have a balancing of uh, gender and 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 unfortunately uh, we have a fabulous population of women uh, which is around close to 48 49% of the population is women we have something like uh, 440 million people who are uh, of women in the working age uh, in in the population so are we leveraging that are we getting them work Uh, or those who aspire to have work because uh, this is again an important thing i have written about it in the article in a politically right way if i have to frame it uh, i will have to say that women in india today enjoy varying degrees of freedom uh, and and when i say that i mean you would when you compare a woman in an urban setting versus somebody who is in a household setting to someone who is in a village setting they enjoy varying degrees of freedom because in some cases uh, there might be families which may not want them to step out beyond the city to work there might be sometimes family who may say you may not go to another state to work uh, you, but we are okay with this state or sometimes they may not be allowed to step out of the house and work these are potential human resources of the country which are capable of being tapped and capable of being made part of the progress of the country and self progress as well and therefore what and th- this goes back to what i was talking about what this pandemic has done the positive side of it is it has proven that you need not step out or you need not be going out to places for example i mean i was looking at the textile sector and the people right i mean you look at bangladesh you any woman catches a bus in the morning at 5 would be there in 2 to 3 hours travel at 8 to some workplace Uh, we have the same facility with our districts but our textile manufacturing happens in different pockets but we are still training and skilling people in districts and other places for textile work same way if you look at uh, most of the places and this applies to rural economies as well women want to step out and work but there aren't work there so therefore what this model can do 
is it can bring work inside your home it can bring work at your doorstep it can bring home to your village to your city to your town to your state that's the beauty of the model and therefore with varying degrees of freedom obviously everybody is at least not left back because of that limitation and therefore it is very critical that we are able to leverage and utilize now if you look at what the government has been doing i mean government has been launching phenomenal amount of schemes to uplift this section of the society which unfortunately was left behind not by their choice but by various social and other related issues so if you look at the prime minister the women and child development ministry they have recognized this and they have started this concept of nari shakti in the focus there are programs various programs like you have uh, on health on uh, education on mudra where you can actually access uh, loans from banks you can set up your own small outlets and so on now if we were to tap this section of the population i mean there are numbers uh, which may, there are studies from various uh, consulting organizations including there is also a mckinsey report which says that there is a huge potential to add something like 770 billion to the indian gdp by 2025 and a massive potential can come through trapping the women part currently their contribution to the gdp is around 18% we are gradually seeing a change because i mean if you look at the startup world also out of the various startup 10% of the startups are run by women some of them are fabulously uh, successful i mean you've seen examples like nike and others which are women run now there is a need for more and more women run enterprises there is a need for more and more women to step out and be part of this progress that india as a nation is making and contribute to it as well i mean i've been meeting people there are women now willing to get into strategic in- industries including defense manufacturing and so on uh, in in various locations where they have their strength and they are also having access to a huge pool of women resources who are capable of producing it so i think it's important that we look at that aspect as well and uh, the beauty of the jeevitam model whatever i've heard uh, from munish speak is this does is gender agnostic uh, it 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 is able to create work for where people are uh, it is able to create work for where people aspire to be and the beauty is that there are also aspirational jobs so it is not that and this is something we fundamentally as as a society we need to understand that more often i often get asked this question you 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 are a proponent of creating livelihoods and gig but what is i mean what is it you want to create as uh, india as a nation of riders or a nation of plumbers and electricians i, I mean that is a fundamental notion as a society we need to stop looking at jobs in a trivial manner looking at work in a trivial manner we should respect every work in its utmost importance that it deserves because every work is a work and the second thing we need to uh, also recognize as a nation is the fact that most of this is actually contributing to nation building and keeping the nation sane civil and yet progressing so very important aspect that we also take the gender along uh, and we don't leave any section of pop population behind in this growth story yeah i would also add a couple of other schemes right more than a couple in fact uh, i mean there's the ujwala and the nalpejal as well which will definitely uh, improve productivity right among that demographic for sure um munish when we can i add to it right what uh, ramesh just now said yeah you know beti bachao beti padhao uske Correct. baad kya right so it is beti ko swalambhi banao right let make her self dependent right uh, what uh, ramesh came out with this fantastic thing you know th- there is again a choice to the woman you want to go out for work you have an option we jeevitam will provide you you want to work you want to do a job and go out you have an option so you can go out for the work but the more important and this is a differentiator which we are creating we are bringing work to her place he she has options now to work at her own place with her own timelines with her own particular limitations which she has if she is a mother she has to take care of her kids or her family she can devote this much time and that flexibility she gets she has and you know what ramesh says i am educated i am bed i am emet there are work opportunities for you i am a you know 8 pass 10 pass i have work opportunities and industry is recognizing it if we are able to bring this women workforce participation which jeevitam focus is one of the prime focus today is that you know that we do out it is going to be there i was in shrinagar recently you know i went around there i saw all the girls going out you know beti bachao beti padhao wala concept wahan pe nahi hai wahan pe betiyan pad rahi hain right the difference right now is for the, all the reasons you know the work opportunities are not available so this gig is going to be a game changer for them where the work opportunity comes them for them without they getting out of from where they are so that is a big change for sure right um so when we look at the future right i mean with an objective like hitting a 5 trillion dollar economy munish how do you see india position in terms of overall competitive 
competitiveness you know from a global perspective uh, and i know you know multiple things uh, will be involved but you know from a jobs employment perspective employability perspective from having interacted with the workforce and so on right how are we positioned and what are some interventions that uh, are necessary to perhaps make us better on that front see the one of the i, I was a head of nri business with city bank right so i have traveled across the world okay and i have seen i have handled the nri community okay over there so there is big demand for the indian talent across the world right we have gone over there and shifted and with this work from home and work from anywhere right the world becoming one is something which we are one marketplace that is the whole thing which is evolving and today if you are a, i have i know of companies in us who are hiring big time in india because if they hire the same resource they are not talking about it for some all good reasons but it is happening slowly and steadily right there are platform like oyster and every one which are coming out which are working the migrant workers and everything so once the big statement which i am making is the world is becoming a marketplace and india indian workforce is rightly positioned to be there because of the english speaking because of the talent which is there because of all our education system so we are in demand and that's happening so that is number 1 Number two, what has changed in the last? You know, the big enabler is in our demographic dividend is the technology. We are game changer. We are creating unicorns. You know, so there are women entrepreneurs coming in. There is a clear technology, right, which is making the entire shift, right? The platforms which are coming in today. You go to Flipkart, then the kind of people, the employment and the livelihood opportunities they are creating is immense, right? Misho, all these big e-commerce platforms, they are creating huge opportunities. The technology and the startup framework. which is coming out that is creating a big opportunity we are also you know we are a impact platform or uh, russian but we are using technology as a big enabler voice technology as a big enabler to do this particular thing so second most important point is the technology as a big enabler which is coming third is you know this whole innovation of which is happening in today's world in the workspace with the work from home and work from anywhere right the whole the shift you know the women workforce participation coming in what ramesh is saying it is already happening right we are seeing this changing sivitam is leading that pwds for example this all vulnerable segment you know the reality is 1% of pwds eligible pwds only work in india that's a hard reality we may talk about everything in various forums but the, this is the reality and what is a solution this whole work from home work from anywhere is one of the solutions which is available for these people right that is changing that is Is going to change, which is there. These skill sets, right? What was happening was where we did not go right in the skilling thing. We realized, ki ha. you know college se nikal ke aake jo bhi education system hai so new education policy is supporting that right where the vocational training is given a big emphasis jivitam is getting into that also where we are training the 11 12th class people with them right and giving them livelihood so when they come out college it is there but abhi bhi reality hai usko abhi hote hote time lagega so college se jo log nikal rahe the unko humne ka skill karte hain the problem came in college se nikle the kaam nahi mil raha tha ab skill karke bhi kaam nahi mil raha so what we had gone wrong is we had created a supply framework without looking into the demand so if you are able to create a demand led supply framework right which is a change which the nsdc and the scaling which i am talking to them that's a framework which is now coming in bring the demand and then create a supply skill supply so that is where the whole now industry is going so skill there is a good infrastructure i go and see the bharat skills right i have a ministry of information beautiful platform they are taking nsdc has done phenomenal job right in top they are also having a they are also a startup now you have to look at nsdc also from a though it's a government from a startup perspective they had their learnings they had their not so good points but they are now working to skilling framework is getting stronger in india so these are the changes which i see roshan coming in right uh ramesh same question to you uh from a government and policy perspective right i mean if you look at the next you know 5 10 15 20 years a lot of things obviously are are going to change right i mean with automation ai you know one of the things you can think of is self driving cars right i, I don't know how, how some of this will work in india right on indian roads um but again you know some of these things may be automated and so on um how is the government looking at this you know uh, from an education from a skill development from an employment or a, a work opportunity perspective how are they thinking about it well i think uh, it's an important question because that's going to shape the future of uh, employability employment and people's participation i mean we are seeing shifts towards different technologies we are absorbing new technologies we are trying to be leapfrogging in some cases like we are doing in case of automotive and so on uh, 
and, and and as you rightly pointed out i mean today bots are replacing humans i mean even if you look at uh, basic things like earlier what your call center operator could handle as the first five questions are being operated by bots today yeah. i mean you're not interacting with humans anymore although as customers we have to probably align to this new normal of talking to a machine uh, and and interestingly i mean i'm interacting and i'm finding that uh, in most cases if it is a basic simple problem it is getting solved i mean what you used to do a simple case was like if your internet was not working with one of the telecom providers you used to give a call wait in the call center talk to this guy and they will do stuff then it moved to a stage where they said okay we will not send the guy to your place i'm rebooting your uh, thing from this place and you just restart your modem to now it has come saying okay you're not even talking to that guy you're you're actually talking to a bot which says okay reboot it from your end just click on this button this is the app in which you can do it so we are seeing lot of traditional mundane jobs going into a bot mode or a technology mode uh years back i think 15 20 years back whenever i used to have visitors from abroad the first thing they used to ask me was why is a lift man sitting inside the lift and operating the lift right i mean that's a fundamental question any westerner would ask uh, and 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 more often many of these were considered as disguised in employment right or disguised in employment which which is like you are creating a by force a job which or a work uh, so i mean your point is right that technology is actually evolving in such a way that certain jobs are getting replaced by machines bots ai and so on but at the same time uh, newer ways of connecting the customer to the end producer or newer ways of reaching out is also creating a huge amount of work in fact yeah. it is creating far amount of work than what we presumed in the 90s and early 2000s as the main line work i mean uh, i mean if you look at uh, the 90s and 2000 call center became a main line work uh, back office became a main line work development centers became a main line work today people are building uh, i mean take the case of coding i mean uh, you you are seeking coders i mean there there, there is a demand but there are even ready made boilerplate boxes coming out where you just put your idea in and you get your code out uh, so which means that you are replacing a large chunk of the coding uh, potentials as well but having said that i think what is also important is in parallel new ideas new age business models are emerging which is triggering massive work opportunities and employment yeah. uh, and and also contributing to the economy i mean who would have thought uh that you will have somebody delivering food from anywhere you want who would have thought that uh, you will be sourcing stuff from whichever shop you want from anywhere uh and, and and therefore there is increasing supply chain there is increasing logistics there is increasing infrastructure falling in place which is actually making us a connected economy and i think the connected economy concept is what is going to throw more work uh, and 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 the and the traditional ones that we have witnessed so far are going away but what is the government looking at i think i think one good thing that we are noticing when we are interacting with the government is the government is wanting to hear more such things the government is wanting to see okay where do you need regulation where do you need support and it has become more of a consultative process which we hadn't witnessed all these years i think we are seeing a change in that that the government is becoming consultative on on this aspects either it wants to learn or it has already learned and wants to know how to fix or it is trying out in collaboration with in the industry to say how many more years we can dabble like this till we reach a point where you need a regulation both because i think while on one side this is good to hear that you have another big economy ballooning it's also important to keep the customer safety uh, the interests of people who are engaged in this model uh, so that they are not left high and dry and the model itself doesn't dry out because somebody came with a policy with a myopic view that Uh, they retrofitted you with the traditional economy and said okay uh, so you, you are like any other traditional business and therefore you should be engaged in that so i think it is a journey which regulators are going through it is a journey government is going through it is a journey industry is going through and all of us who are supporting the discourse between the government and industry are going through i mean every day is a learning for all of us uh, i think this is this is something that will evolve and but the important part is all these stakeholders need to be plugged on daily on a daily basis uh, to monitor handhold so that we don't 
reach a stage where something falls through the cracks yeah so this was a fascinating conversation uh, again thank you ramesh and munish uh, for uh, you know being a part of this uh, uh, i think the coming days will be interesting uh, and we should definitely revisit this uh, at some point of time to take stock of you know everything that's happened uh, so yeah thank you so much uh, again and all the best uh, munish with uh, everything that you are doing at uh, jeevitam roshan i must uh, congratulate you for taking this initiative see livelihood is a big problem right it's the saving lives and saving livelihood and this discourse is very important because i think it has to reach out to the right people right and you are doing a phenomenal job roshan for this so congratulations to you also and thank you uh, to us for giving us uh, this opportunity we want to do more this sort of a conversation Fantastic. thank you yeah thank you so much uh, munish thank you for tuning in to this episode of the bharat vartha podcast if you want to see more content like this then don't forget to subscribe to our channel We started Bharat Vartha to facilitate long form discussions on politics policy and culture. We don't necessarily endorse anything that was said in this episode. If you wish to offer us feedback, do reach out to us on social media. We are at Bharat Vartha on Facebook, Twitter and Instagram. You could also get in touch with us on our website www.bharatvartha.in. The links are in the description below. Until next time, stay safe, take care and jai.